The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son. And she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today we are celebrating the fourth Sunday of Advent. And later this evening, tonight, we'll be celebrating Christmas already. So very fast. Right, this is the shortest Advent that we could possibly go through. Now, if only sometimes God could work so fast in our lives also. You know, this scene from the Gospel that we read about the angel Gabriel announcing the birth of the Messiah. The Jews were waiting for it for so long. And Mary also was one of those waiting. Waiting waiting for the coming of this Saviour who would redeem them, save them from their sins, deliver them from their captors. But it seems as though God delayed for a very long time. And yet, we must acknowledge that God had a plan. That was why the prophets were there giving the prophecies, assuring the people that God had a plan. God had not abandoned His people, but they were called to be patient. So this patience of the people of God is something that we also have to practice in our lives. And the thing is, God will surprise us. Yeah, We know even the second coming will come also as a surprise, like a thief coming in the night. So this seems to be the way God works. He likes to give us surprises. And so we have to always be patient and ready for God to surprise us. Okay, how many of us here like surprises in our life? Or we don't like surprises. We want everything to be already pre-planned. We know exactly what's going to happen. For our own lives even, we hope there are no surprises. Yet I'm sure there are some of us also who like surprises, right? Imagine somebody throws you a surprise party, a birthday party, right? Imagine if this evening your spouse has a surprise present for you. We also like surprises, do we not? So sometimes, yes, we welcome surprises in our lives. Sometimes when surprises are a little bit, uh, cause us to be a bit uncomfortable, then we might think that, hmm, surprises are not good. But God is indeed a God of surprises. But He is a God of surprises with a plan. That is the difference. 
And so, if you're going to throw a surprise birthday party, someone has planned something. So it's more of those kind of surprises that nobody has planned. I think those are the kind of surprises that we might not really welcome in our life. Yeah? So now, why am I getting at this? You look at Mary. She got the shock of her life that evening when the angel appeared to her. Do you think she was waiting for the angel? She was not. She got a shock. And that was why she was even afraid. And that's how it is with us sometimes. When God surprises us in life with something, very, really unexpected, we might be afraid. But if we remind ourselves that if this surprise is coming from God, and we know that He has a plan, and His plan is always for good, never for evil, and we also know God will never try to achieve good by doing evil. He does not need to do that because He's all-powerful. He can achieve good by the way of good alone. So if we believe that, we know that God has a plan. He is an all-good God and He needs only goodness to achieve His plan. Then we will welcome the surprises of God in our life. It's only natural, just like Mary though, to feel a little bit confused and even a bit afraid when something like that happens. Now, maybe some of us might think, well, luckily my name is not Mary, but there are many of us also named Mary, right? Very common name for us Catholics. Yeah? But maybe some of us will think, God has never surprised me in my life. There were lots of surprises, but I don't know which were the surprises that came from God. So we might think that, hmm, has God forgotten me? Does anybody feel like that, that God has forgotten them? I wouldn't ask you to raise your hands now, right? Would I? Should I? Should I not? Okay, I would not. <laughs> anyway, sometimes I can tell you, I also feel that God has forgotten me. Sometimes, especially when I'm going through some kind of trials and difficulties and all kinds of crazy things happen. I sometimes also can think that, hmm, how come God has forgotten me? <laughs> or, what did I do? <laughs> What did I do wrong? How did I go astray that I no longer seem to be blessed by God? Sometimes that thought can happen and come into our mind. But that's where we must reassure ourselves knowing that God is always there with us. Even when it seems as though He has abandoned us. Perhaps the moment is not yet right. Perhaps that moment when you're expecting God to be there in your life, you actually can handle it on your own. You don't need His miraculous intervention. So He asks you to pull up your socks and face it. But He's with you, silently, gently guiding you, even when you do not know it. And only later, after you have overcome whatever it is, whatever nasty surprise it is that you had to go through, then only you will realize that actually God was there and He had not abandoned me. But when you are in the midst of it all, it can seem difficult. Now, this is where we need faith. Faith is what helps us to walk in the darkness because faith is like a light. Unfortunately, sometimes this light also is hidden and such that we do not see it. But it gives us that strength that we need to persevere in our journey. And that was what the second reading was trying to tell us. God alone can give us that strength. And so if we are here today, know that we have not walked by our own strength, but by the strength of God. All right. Not sure if this is making sense to anyone. If you are feeling lost now, then pray for light. <laughs> and pray for faith. Because oftentimes, that's how life seems like. It doesn't make sense. Now, coming back to Mary, she got the surprise of her life. And during that encounter with the angel, not only was she surprised, she had to make an important decision, right? Whether to welcome this surprise or to reject it. And being the woman of faith that she was, she said yes to God. And thanks to the yes of Mary, we have our Saviour, Jesus, whom we will be celebrating uh, His birth this evening. 
But let us pause for a moment. What if Mary had said, No, I don't want this surprise. I was fine before this, I'll be fine after this. Go away. I'm going to be in trouble. I'm already a betrothed to Joseph. If I'm found with child, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to be stoned. What if Mary said, No? Ah, we have no Christmas to celebrate. So we thank God uh, that our mother Mary, she said yes. That is why we love our mother so much. Right? Not because we want to elevate her and put her next to God or something like that. No. It's because without her yes, we won't be here even to celebrate yeah, soon the birth of Jesus. So the importance you know, of that yes of Mary. Now, sometimes we are also in the same situation where God asks us to do something and we have to say yes or no. You know, and I know that sometimes when that question has been put to me, I have also said no. And I've always regretted it. But the times when I have said yes to God, that is when really I saw Him work the miracles that He wanted to. You know, sometimes we want God to work miracles in our life, but we are not willing to say yes to Him. We say, you show us the miracle first, then I will say yes. Isn't it? But we don't see anything, so we say no. But this is where I want to invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, if you feel God is inviting you in your life to do something for Him, say yes. Then you will see the marvels that He wants to do. Don't wait for Him to do the marvels first. Then only say yes. And know that your yes could be so important to those around you. And that is why you should say yes to God. Okay, finally, in the first reading today, we have another character, David. David, we see, he was very blessed by God also. And David wanted to do something for God. He wanted to build God a nice temple. You saw that in the first reading. So David was actually thinking about God, you know. And God rejected him. <laughs> Very strange, right? Here is David with all his good heart. He's so grateful to God for giving him the kingdom, fighting with him, killing all his enemies, etc. Whatever it is, then he's reflecting and he's saying, Wow, I'm living in a palace and then God only has a tent. So I'm going to build God a nice dwelling place. And God says, hmm, That is your plan, not my plan. I am not interested. Never mind. Still, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your son and your descendants. Still, I'm going to be with you. Thank you for your plan, but I'm not interested. Your son will build me the temple, not you. Sometimes also, it's like that in life. With our own good will, we want to do something for God. But maybe that something that we want to do actually isn't what God wants. So that's another difficult situation we could be in. We might think that this is what God wants me to do. And yet, actually, that is not in God's plan at all. Maybe that work is a good work, the building of the temple. But God chose somebody else to do it, not you. So then be humble and accept God has chosen someone else. In this case, it is Solomon, the son of David. At that moment, we must be assured. And that's why God assures David, I am with you, I am going to bless you. Don't feel at this moment, because I rejected your plan, I am rejecting you. No. I am still pleased with you, David. It's just that this work is not for you. You have done enough. You have finished, done what I needed you to do. Now you are resting, continue to rest. Your son will take up the work. So sometimes it's like that also. We might feel that God has rejected us, even rejected our good plans that we want to do something for God. But maybe it's not the case. God has not rejected you, just that He has chosen somebody else. 
that does not mean that you are not favoured. All right. So you see, we have on the one hand David, and on the other hand also, we have Mary. Now, on Mary's part, instead, it is God who comes and says, I want you to do something. And then the trial for Mary would be to say yes or to say no. Now, both of these situations can happen in our life, and that is where we always need to walk by faith. Now, faith is the light that will guide us, that will help us to say the yes to God when we need to say yes, and to accept also the no of God when we hear God say no to our plans. And remember, if He says no to our plans, it's not because He has rejected us. It may not even be because what we plan to do is a bad thing or something that does not bring Him glory. It's just that He may have chosen someone else to do it. So my final point is this. Every one of us actually is chosen. Mary was chosen. David was chosen. You are chosen. I am chosen. Every one of us is in God's plan. Do you believe that or not? Can we say amen to that? Amen. Can, huh? Okay, so let's say amen. <laughs> amen? Amen. Amen. I am chosen. You are chosen. This community is chosen. What are we chosen for? That is the question we need to continuously discern in our life. There are certain things which are common to us all, certain things that are particular, which means there is a common mission that we share and that's a very general thing, to bring the light of Christ into the world, to spread the good news, to live a life of holiness. This is all a very general mission that is given to each person, to all the community. But each one of us also has a specific mission. And this is often where we are not so clear about what exactly have I been chosen for. That specific mission in my life. So some of us may already be doing the mission without knowing what it is. Some of us may still be searching for what is that mission that God has for me. Now to be chosen is to be blessed. And just as the angel said to Mary, you know, rejoice so highly favoured. Each one of us here is highly favoured. Each one of us here is blessed. And that is why we should rejoice. So this evening, as we come also to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus, let us rejoice because God loved the world so much. He loved each and every one of us so much. He had a plan of salvation and that plan had Jesus at the very centre. And at the centre of the heart of Jesus was you and me.